Hello and a very good welcome to Screwy Loops. As the last decade has suddenly drew to a close, I thought it'd be the perfect time to look back on those game-changing coasters from the... Um... So we had the 90s, we had the noughties, and we've got the tensies, or the teensies. Joining our expedition is a man that makes Indiana Jones look like Postman Pat. It is, I can't believe I'm saying this, Sam from Expedition Theme Park. Game-changing coasters of the last decade. There's quite a few to choose from. My name's Sam and welcome back to Expedition Theme Park. Oh wait, wrong channel. Let's do this. So with that, you're watching Screwy Loops and this is seven game-changing roller coasters of the decade featuring Expedition Theme Park. <laughs> Launching this video off is a coaster so fast that goggles are required to stop your eyes imploding. This is Formula Rossa at Ferrari World. The world's fastest coaster which opened in 2010 and has remained so this entire decade. Terminal velocity obviously wasn't enough for Ferrari World and Intamin. They wanted to excel further than no other coaster ever has before. They pushed the envelope so far that it shot straight through the letterbox and into the back garden. Amazon Prime fear. Topping King Dakar's top speed at the time of 128 miles per hour, Formula Rossa propels to an incredible 149.1 miles per hour in just 4.9 seconds. Whew, I'm out of breath. But instead of opting for a typical up and down top hat style layout, they went for a much longer, speed focused design consisting of large bank turns and airtime hills. And it delivered exactly what it says on the tin. The rush of accelerating to 149 miles per hour is an unparalleled experience. Seriously, it was so fast, I forgot to shut my mouth and physically suffocated at the end of the launch. It's absolutely bonkers. The rest of the layout packs some great forces and awesome pops of airtime, making for a truly one of a kind experience. This is also the last hydraulic launch coaster Intamin built before moving on to LSMs, a design trend which flourished during the decade. What a send off. While spinning coasters have always been a very popular choice for many theme parks, amusement parks, piers, and even traveling fun fairs, none of these have quite done it like Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. I'm sure many of you have done the thing where you are playing around on no limits and you decide to change the train on a looping coaster so it spins. Time Traveler is pretty much the closest you're ever going to get to this in reality. Mack Rides had taken the spinning coaster design and fused it with ride tropes never seen before on this type of coaster. To make this as clear as possible, they opted for an insane 90 degree drop straight out of the station, directly into a dive loop. This is not your typical spinner. The spinning cars add a whole dimension to inverting, offering very different results each time you ride. Along with a vertical drop and inversions, Time Traveler also contains two LSM launches, with one propelling you up to speeds of 45 miles per hour. Being the first Mac Extreme spinning coaster allowed Time Traveler to break a few records, such as the world's tallest and fastest full circuit spinning coaster and the first spinning coaster to contain a total of three inversions. Time Traveler is certainly one of the defining coasters of the past decade, and I'm pretty confident we'll be seeing plenty more of these in the future. This one is a shining example of the roller coaster done as art. Taran at Fantasialand is one of, if not the best looking coaster of the decade. The quality combination of an Intamin Blitz and an excessively detailed environment is a match made in heaven. Taran is a rarity. It's not often you see a coaster strike the perfect balance between a thrilling yet excellent layout and the level of theme into rival even big shots such as Disney. And by thrilling, I don't mean your typical family thrill themed adventure either. Taran is intense. You launch to speeds of 72.7 miles per hour across a layout which is crammed full of tight bank turns, sudden transitions as well as buckets of airtime. One particular moment shortly after the first launch, you get so much ejector that the ominous sound of wah exerts from every passenger on board. Believe me, happens every time. Thanks to Klugheim's densely loaded environment, Tarrant's layout is an absolute labyrinth. The track is sewn in and out of a seemingly never-ending pit of valleys and 
tunnels, creating for a layout brimming with unpredictability. It's so tightly strung together that the track overlaps itself an insane total of 116 times, more than any other coaster operating today. Taran is stunning, and that's why I believe it's one of the biggest game changers of the decade. Close your eyes and imagine a world without RMCs. Believe it or not, this is exactly what it was like 10 years ago. Although Rocky Mountain Construction have been in business since 2001, it wasn't until 2011 where they debuted their first ever roller coaster, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. Taking what remained of the former DIN Corporation wooden coaster, Texas Giant, RMC transformed what was originally a pretty standard woody into something the world had never seen. They made it taller, faster, and generally more exciting. But the biggest difference was in the use of RMC's steel iBox track. This allowed RMC to pull off all kinds of elements that you wouldn't usually get on a typical woody with ease. And the reason RMCs are so iconic in the industry today. New Texas Giant was the start of something special. Some may think of it as an offence to turn a wooden coaster into steel, but RMC broke conventions in the best possible way. They created a new form of coaster which would quite literally spread like wildfire across the globe, many breaking into the official top tens and claiming world records. And if it wasn't for New Texas Giant, there would be no Steel Vengeance, Iron Guazis or Zadras. And this is why I believe New Texas Giant is one of, if not the most defining coaster of the decade. Vekoma, home to many enthusiast favourites such as the suspended looping coaster, corkscrew and boomerang models. We all love those, don't we? Let's be completely honest and agree that Vekoma has had quite a rough history. From former rivalry with roller coaster pioneers Arrow, to your average SLC spreading like the Black Plague, which I suppose, whilst not great for us, it's good for them. And then there was the Lech Coaster, built at a mysterious Polish theme park called Legendia. Lech Coaster came around relatively unnoticed in 2017. It wasn't until people started riding this coaster in which the word spread that, the coma is back baby, take everything you once disliked about the coma loopers and toss them in the trash, because Lech Coaster is a whole new kind of beast. It's smooth, intense and most importantly, a barrel load of fun reaching heights of 131 feet and speeds of just 59 miles per hour. Lek isn't designed to break records or particularly shock anyone. It's designed with one thing in mind, quality. It's your standard looping coaster remodernized and set new foundations for coasters of this ride type. Sure, Formula at Energylandia was the first taste of modern Vekoma thrills, but it was Lek which provided the first true taste of modern Vekoma thrills, and placed the company back up with the big boys, Intamin, RMC and BNM in my opinion. Vekoma is definitely one to watch over the next decade. Just to prove how much RMC have defined a decade of roller coasters, here's another one. Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster was unlike anything we've seen before. Opening in 2018 at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, this was RMC's first example of their Raptor Track design, taking Compact to an entirely new level. Golden Lasso boosts a single rail track, a super tight layout and a train which sits just one rider per row along its lengthy 8 car train. Like their iBox and Topper Track coasters, this type also feels completely unique and unlike any other design out there today. Using Golden Lasso as an example, the trains straddle onto the track like a monorail, and due to both the track and trains being a lot smaller than your typical coaster, the sense of speed given from this is unrivaled. It offers the thrills of a much larger and faster coaster, at half the size and footprint, also delivering a much snappier and a generally wilder layout than most coasters of this scale. Even though only two of these have been built so far, with Jersey Devil Coaster also coming later this year, RMC has managed to design a compact coaster unlike anything else, and with many parks becoming more and more limited on space, Raptor tracks are the ideal choices. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more of these popping up throughout the coming decade. RMC Fort Park anyone? 
Turning worlds upside down is the smiler at Alton Towers, Gerslauer's first taster of the Infinity Coaster model, a toolbox in which provides theme parks infinite possibilities. Is there a better way to showcase this type of coaster than by smashing a world record in their first design? Packing in a total of 14 inversions, the smiler still remains unbeaten to this day, and like Formula Rossa, the smiler has spent most of the decade holding on to this achievement, and it's doubtful this will be beaten anytime soon. The tightly packed layout is another reason why I believe the Smiler is an absolute game changer. Due to the park's endless limitations, the layout had to be carefully sewn together without breaching a single one. The footprint that the park and Gerstler had to work with was nigh on impossible to squeeze a coaster boasting 14 inversions in, but by god they pulled it off. The Smiler features more track per square metre than any other coaster on the planet today. And to me, that's what you call an infinity coaster. The Smiler is proof that even with the strictest restrictions, you can still pull a record breaking coaster off in style. Alton Towers and Gerslauer, you deserve a great big pat on the back. Thank you so much for watching this look back at just a few of the defining coasters of the last decade. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to join the expedition with me, come on over to my channel at Expedition Theme Park. I just want to say a massive thanks to Sam from Expedition Theme Park for joining in this video. I'm a huge fan of the channel and if you already haven't then please 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 go check it out. It produces some of the best theme park content on the internet, link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and give the bell a flick to keep all up to date. Top left is the latest video, bottom left is a random one and make sure to hit that button on the right for the ride of your lives. You've been watching Screwy Loops, tra a bit.